Right, so ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to another edition of In Conversation with podcast series. Um, this is a podcast series where we, we explore ideas linked to positive education in schools and we try and share our thoughts. We have guests on every week. I'm Craig Carolyn from Intrinsic Education and this week we are going to share some of our thoughts on the critical aspect of student well-being, which is around the whole idea of sport and physical education in our schools. And on that, we are really pleased and honored to have Ryan Stradwick with us today. He's the Senior Master of Sport at Michael House um, in the beautiful Natal Midlands. Uh, we're pretty jealous of you, Ryan. And um, he's also got a really good background, having been a professional rugby player himself and played for the Sharks as well as for London Irish in the UK. And then obviously a wealth of experience as a coach, having coached in the junior levels as well as all the way up um, to assistant coach of, of the Sharks. Ryan, it's, it's awesome to have you here. Morning. Morning, Craig. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's wonderful. And thanks so much for giving up some time. I know that uh, the whole family are there, much like all of us. And this is the joy of lockdown. So, um, yeah. And, not, and time is not really an issue at the moment. We have lots <laughs> of that. <laughs> so, so keeping me busy, it's fantastic. Uh, brilliant. So, you know, folks, just what we're going to do today is, is share some thoughts on you know, what sport is, is looking like in our schools. And it's not just about sport, it's obviously about the well-being of our, of our young folk in schools and really to explore some, some ideas as what's, what's been happening in lockdown and then to look at what it's going to look like when we come back into school. And, you know, we know there's going to be a massive disruption and um, Ryan's going to shed some light on the conversations that he's been having with his fellow, with his fellow directors of sport um, around exactly what that might look like. So Ryan, I suppose as, as a starter, I mean, you know, tell us whatever you, you know, as obviously the person who's leading kind of the sports side of things at, at, at the school, what have you guys been doing in lockdown to try and keep yeah, it's, engaged? Yeah, it's been, it's, it's been tough, eh, Craig. Um, you know, to start off with, uh, we were hoping this was only going to be sort of a month sort of sabbatical, which came across at the same time as a holiday. So it wasn't a bad thing. So, you know, we were obviously in full well, the beginning of the rugby season, so everyone was conditioned. We had all, I think most of the schools had played one game, and we all just thought we'd head off on a holiday and come back. So, yeah. to start off with, it was pretty easy. We set the guys' holiday programs, um, the hockey guys and the rugby guys, and said, you know, we're back off the holidays and we'll be playing. So, yeah. it was pretty simple. We gave them all conditioning programs for their holiday blocks. Um, little did we know that a week later they would be confined to their bedrooms or their houses, um, to their gardens, um, some people probably to flats. Yeah. So it suddenly opened up a, a whole new can of worms and we had to start thinking out of the box. Yeah. So, so did you guys get together as a, as, as a department and, and or were you engaged yeah, so, with other folk? From yeah, so as a sports department in my class, um, uh, we're fortunate we've got uh, two sports scientists and we've got James Fleming, who's head of our conditioning. Yeah. And we decided that um, we have to tailor these conditioning programs to, to suit whatever the boys' sort of opportunities are at home, um, whether they've got big gardens, whether they can do it in their lounges or whether they can do it on a farm. Uh, you know, so some guys were more spoiled than others. Um, yeah. So we, we put a few conditioning programs together and, um, you know, the, the start off, it was just easy. We, we did basic um, body movement stuff. Um, if the guys could run, we, we could put, added in uh, running blocks. Uh, and um, we tailored it so that on their normal sports day, they would have sport. So at three o'clock, if it was your sports day, you would be expected to go out and, and, and do the conditioning program. This all went well for probably a couple of weeks. Um, and then obviously the news came out that uh, the lockdown was going to be a bit longer and the chances of us playing sport this coming term was pretty much zero. So suddenly we found that the motivation levels of all our boys <laughs> dropped off knowing that they weren't going to play a hockey match, knowing that they weren't going to play a rugby match. Yeah. And now suddenly the thought was, well, I don't need to be fit anymore. I don't need to condition myself. So once again, we had to go back to the drawing board to try and sort things out. Yeah. And, and, and tell me something, Ryan, how, what does that look like now? So if, if and, and, you know, bring in a little bit about what you guys are doing for, say, the, the folks who aren't necessary, because you're back at school now, aren't you? 
Not really, no, not yet. No, no I mean, as in back, back in school, uh, not physically. Uh, back in school, <laughs> back as in, yeah, as in, uh, yeah, the boys are, are at lessons all morning. Yeah. So, um, obviously, we've all got, uh, the private schools are quite fortunate that all our boys are online. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think some of the major government schools are the same. So, what we try and do is every day we put out a, a little program. Yeah. Um, whether the boys are doing it or not is, is another story, but we're obviously trying to sure. trying to persuade them to do some form of exercise. You know, it's good for your mind, it's good for your soul, um, and, and obviously good for your body. So we we do put out every day. We put out a little challenge, and then on Friday we've got what we call a 500 challenge, um, which is 500 reps of different exercises. Oh wow! Uh, it will be like 100 air squats, 100 burpees, uh, 50 push-ups, 50 50 sit-ups, and it will work out to 500. Oh, wow. And we put that out every Friday and we encourage the boys to ent- record themselves with a the time and then enter their times. We have a, we have a, a log on, online where the boys record their times and we're seeing who's got the fastest time. Um, so we're trying to give them some sort of competition. Our, your biggest challenge with school kids these days is, um, is, is trying to motivate them to train for something. If there's nothing on the weekend, they don't want to train. Yeah. So we, uh, we're trying to sort of make it exciting. We're trying to... Um, make it competitive so that they're competitive, competing against their mates and we have a leaderboard and every week it gets updated um, and we even have a, a leaderboard where we see the most improvement so from one Friday to the next Friday you see the most improvement. Yeah. Uh, Ryan I think that's great advice for for any kind of any sports teachers or phys ed teachers who are listening to to set a kind of little mini target at the end of the week and yeah. you know at least they have something that they're, they're striving to because you're right uh, uh, it is you know, it's it's difficult, and I think our, you know everyone's moods are, are are waxing and waning in this in this lockdown. And to try and create something a terminal point that they're aiming at is is, is a really good idea for folk to take out of this. Yeah, I think I think what we're finding the the most challenging now is to try and keep the, the kids motivated. Yeah. Um, and you've got to keep mixing it up. I know it's time consuming, but you've got to keep changing it. You can't put out a a, a program. Uh, for three weeks or four weeks and they look at it and they see what's coming up they don't want to do it it's almost easier to put out something almost every day and say you know challenge yourself to do this um i think it's also a great opportunity to to set themselves challenges so set them you guys you've got a month now at home see let's see if you can do 100 push-ups um on in a row without stopping in this month so start off and you set them a program do 10 every day 20 the next week 30 the next week and see how they go you know it's it is an opportunity, and I think those are the things where you got to think out of the box. Challenge, yeah. challenge the kids. It's not easy. I know I've got two sons, and, and one's a teenager, so trying to get anything done um, without cracking the whip is really tough in these in these times. You know, so um, little challenges are, are probably the easiest way to get them yeah. to do stuff, and also compete against their mates. I know a lot of schools will have WhatsApp groups. I've coached on a 15 A's, and I've got a WhatsApp group, and every time there's a training session that should be happening, I send them. A training block and say yeah, where's yeah. who can do this you know? yeah. um, hopefully at least 50 percent of them are doing it um who knows um they always give you the thumbs up or thanks <laughs> to it if you don't know if they're actually doing it so <laughs> that's why we also invented the, the sort of leaderboard and recording system yeah. on our online yeah. platform so that we could see who was doing it who was logging in yeah it's a great it's a great tool to use i mean that's you know it's funny you talk about about kids you know we've got the same we've got a you know a teenage son and, and a daughter is slightly younger and it's amazing the difference you know same genes totally different approach to what they're doing and to try and get get our son out there to do stuff is much harder than than our daughter and i suppose we that's it we've got to we've got to try and find ways to motivate them i i, I do love that idea and i think you know ryan you and i had a conversation uh, a couple of days ago where we were talking about this whole idea of imagine, you know, kind of incremental increases and imagine if, if our kids had started doing a specific skill at the start of this lockdown and each day did a little bit more, how much, you know, how much better they could be now yeah. and actually, yeah. you know, and it, it's trying to have that conversation with them to, to get them to realize, you know, these yeah. little bits kind of all add up. Yeah, the- it's, it's perfect time. And I think if I look back now, we've, what have we been sitting here six weeks now, what, what you could have achieved in six weeks. You know, and I, I spoke to my son this morning and said, come on, set yourself a challenge. And he says, okay, I want to be able to do 10 pull-ups. You know, so, you know, if he had started six weeks ago, he would probably be doing his 10 pull-ups now. Absolutely. So, but now he's, now he's starting from scratch and we don't know how long we're going to be here. But, you know, it could be another six weeks and, and maybe he will get his 10 pull-ups in. But 
what you could have achieved in the last six weeks. Uh, in hindsight, now obviously with perfect sight, but the, the things you could have achieved, whether it's a, a pull up or a push up or a couple of sit ups, or you know, yeah. obviously you got to think, you got to think about things you can do at home. It's 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 quite hard to say I want to run five k's in, in in twenty minutes, but you you haven't been able to get out there. You know? yeah. But yeah. now that you can run and get out and run, maybe that's like another challenge. You know? yeah. Get out there and see if you can do a 5K in 20 minutes, which is a, a nice challenge, or a 3K in 12 minutes. Um, those sort of things are where the guys need to get out and challenge themselves. Yeah, and, and it, is, it is. You know, I was, ch I was chatting to my father this morning, and, and he, he was saying that for the first time in this lockdown, he actually got out this morning and went for a walk. And uh, he said it was amazing because, you know, he got back and felt like he could wash the dishes and, you know, sweep the floor and, all, you know, all of a sudden different mindset, active. And it is, it's, it's you know, this is what doing exercise can do for you. And, and Well, for sure. And I think that's what uh, the kids of today don't understand. You know, they, they're quite happy to sit in front of the computer all morning and do lessons if they can, and then probably sit on their phones for an hour chatting to their mates. But uh, what they realize, need to realize is that they need to get out and exercise. You know, they Correct. need blood to the brain and they need, they need vitamin D as well. You know, so it's it's just yeah. in the, on the veranda or just on the, in the garden getting some sunshine. Um, obviously, you can. We've also played with the idea now that the, the lockdowns are level four and you can get out and run between six and nine. Maybe we must start our school day, obviously, because we're online and they start their school day. Maybe start a little bit, bit later and let the kids go and do exercise or we give them a program yeah. to do exercise in the morning. And then start their lessons a little bit later. Absolutely um, right. Yeah, because, and, and yeah, yeah, this yeah, keeping healthy is probably the most important thing. Absolutely. Also, the biggest concern for us is that if or when we come back, um, if we're going to be playing sport, we don't know how soon that's going to be. But if you've been sitting at home for six weeks and you haven't done any conditioning, you're in a serious category of of um, yeah. risking injury. Risk. Yeah, because we we were working it out the other day. Like, just the boys walking around campus every day, most boys will take 2,000 steps, which is close to 8 to 10 Ks. But now you're at home, you're literally walking from your bedroom to the bathroom, to the kitchen, to the dining room. You're probably doing 500 to 600 steps a day, whereas wow. your normal school day would be 10,000 steps. So it's just that sort of sitting at home, you think you're doing something, but you're actually not moving around. But at school, when you're walking from lesson to lesson from your dorms, obviously for us, we're all boarders, uh, down to the sports fields, down to the gym, down to the tuck shop or whatever. Guys are getting in eight to 10 Ks a day, just walking without even realizing it. And That's now a really good point. It's a sedentary lifestyle where you're sitting around doing nothing. Yeah. So and and that's for every child in the country. I mean, you know, every, everyone. no matter what school you go to, you know, you, you're going uh, from classroom to classroom, you out at break time, you, you know, so yeah, there, there's a significant shift in the amount of exercise that our kids are doing just by the nature of this. Huge, yeah, it's huge, and, and that, I think that is going to be the biggest challenge for everyone when the schools do finally reopen. Um, obviously, the chat is just matrix now, but obviously, it'll be easier to just deal with matrix to start off with, but just get them moving, getting yeah. back into their movement pattern, especially the boys who live in big cities. Obviously, if you've got kids, mainly kids from farming areas or rural areas, it's a little bit easier. But if you guys got guys who've been living in big cities and all they've got is a townhouse or a Ten foot garden or whatever they haven't been doing much. Absolutely. That is going to be a challenge because you can't. We're not going to be able to jump straight back into sport anyway no. because of that challenge. I was just going to pick up injuries. Right, and that's a, that. That gives us a really good opportunity to segue into the into the idea of, of what you know. What do you think? You know, and I know you're in contact. You 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 guys have a, a director of sport sort of group that you you and you've been chatting to each other, and that that group is wide ranging. You know, across the the independent schools as well as the government schools you know what are you guys you know what is sport going to look like when we come back in our schools yeah it's difficult uh, Craig we um, we were chatting this week um, as you said we've got a, a, a top 10 boys schools which is just your your sort of major sporting school mm. that compete against each other um, and yeah, you know, it's government and private, and it's cross KZN. And we were chatting as to what what are we going to do? What is it going to look like? And at the moment, no one can give you that answer because we don't know when we're going back. No. So the first questions that were thrown around, and that was about three weeks ago, is can we can we still relive the hockey and rugby season? Do we move it to third quarter? Do we push all the seasons out? Um, do we move uh, drop cricket and uh, the summer sports in the last quarter because they really had a season in the beginning of the year? Yeah. And this is, you know, it's, it's challenges, but this is just to sort of accommodate your matric boys who've probably been waiting 
10, 12 years to get into first team and now oh. they're not getting that opportunity. Yeah. So, yeah, it is heartbreak for them, um, especially when you think that the boys probably started training in July last year for this year's season from the rugby and hockey perspective. Yeah. So there's a few questions and, and ideas being thrown around. I, I don't know how much we're going to be able to change the seasons. I, I know some schools are, are thinking about playing rugby in the third term, but are we even going to play sport in the third term? Yep. If, uh, if the chat that's going around that this virus is only going to peak in September, then we're not going to be playing any sport in the third term. Um, yeah. And we'll be lucky to be playing in the fourth term. So it's it's going to be a challenge for the schools to to keep their own kids motivated on the sporting front. Um, for sure. I think the first step is everyone's going to be back at school bef for a while before we start playing. And that chat between the between the heads of sport is let's wait till we've been back at school for a month and then we'll start looking. So we actually this time of year we start planning for our summer season. We start preparing the the fixtures. So we sit down the table and decide who's going to play each other in the summer season and that starts at the end of September. Yeah. And we even look at the winter season for next year. So we actually yeah. can't even look yeah. at that. So we're not even looking at summer this year or winter for next year because we're not too sure where we're heading. So Ryan, you you talk about you spoke about the that idea of you know kids coming back and, and we know there's going to be a period where they are not able to play you know to play fixtures against other schools. Um, and I imagine there's going to be some element of physical distancing even within our schools. You, what do you envisage the programs are going to look like in your school in that interim phase? Yeah, it's, a, it's interesting because uh, obviously I think Wits, Wits University yeah. put out a, a sport schedule of, of how, how they envisage things should be with yeah. all the different sports and how far apart you need to be depending on what level we're at and, and the risk assessment on each sport. Um, tennis was looking the best that yeah. they could actually play at level four and that was only singles. Yeah. Um, and then so soccer, soccer, which is obviously the ma major sport next term for all the schools, schools is, I think it's level, level one before we can even start playing against wow. each other. Yeah. So at level four, you can train individually. Then in level three, you can start doing group training. So what we're thinking at the moment is if we if our matrix come back in, in a week or two's time then we can start training them individually as in, in small groups as long as it's not doing anything with each other so it'll be things like running we've yeah. got a we've got a an assessment program at our school where each boy gets assessed on that on a few um, basic exercises push-ups sit-ups pull-ups uh, long broad jumps and triple jumps and a, and a one mile run so yeah. we we're going to look into doing that test as soon as they get back and just see what what has actually happened to these boys over the yeah. probably two months that they've been away because we've got data now for three years on on, on, on boys. the boys progress yes yeah. so it's going to be very interesting so our first thought is okay matrix come back we're going to test them all see how they are obviously we're only going to be able to test four or five boys at a time and spread them out of a certain area um and then we'll see we'll see what the results are like but the first plan is just to get them moving and yeah. and and get them out. Um, so we're going to encourage things if we can, if we can get into like touch rugby. To start off, touch rugby is not really allowed. Um, you know, we certain distance apart. But as soon as we can get into that level, it'll be touch rugby, uh, hockey, fives hockey, just getting the boys moving. But to start off with, it's just going to be getting boys running. Um, running and, and individual can, skills, I suppose. Yeah. Where they not yeah, running. it's going to be tough to do individual skills because you don't know what sports season we're going, going to go into. It's so so, yeah. so it's, I guess you're doing uh, things it's really the, hard. Yeah, but, but then, yeah, saying that cricket, I see cricket, you're allowed to do one-on-one uh, -on -one batting and bowling. So that's, I think the cricketers will be quite happy. They'll be able to start with that. Um, water polo, you can swim at level four. So that's not too bad. Uh, and the other one is basketball. So basketball, you can only do individual training at level. Yeah, yeah. So that's going to be tough. Um, trying to just do individual training, you know, you only got a certain amount of hoops. And but you, that's for it. us, uh, for us, the skills isn't going to be a major thing. I think it's just going to be the movement of the yeah. boys that's going to be a major thing. Uh, and I imagine that that's you know fits, feeds back into the well-being part. And and you know I imagine if they're getting themselves back fit and you know, prepared for when they are allowed back onto into fixtures, they're at least conditioned and but also in the interim it's it's doing them well in the classroom, I suppose. As you yeah. said earlier, healthy body, healthy mind. Yeah, I think I think the the, the hope and, and the and the praying that we're all doing is that the boys have been cooped up for so long that they're actually gonna to want to get out. 
Yeah. You know, most people, when they come back, they're actually going to want to do exercise. I think yeah. the thing they're probably missing the most is the sort of sport camaraderie that they get at schools, um, that getting out onto the fields and playing with their mates and things like that. Well, that's what we're all hoping. <laughs> Hopefully, they haven't got into this lifestyle where they're quite happy to sit on the couch and sit on their phones and their computers and things like that. But I think the telling, I've got a feeling most of them will be wanting to get out. Absolutely. I think the telling, I think the telling or the tell has been how busy the streets have been between course, six o'clock yeah. and nine o'clock. As soon as it opened up. Yeah, yeah. as soon as I, I, I think there's, there's definitely a human kind of need and will to move. And, and yeah. I, think, I, I think you're right. I think once, the, once we, we, they get back, I think they're going to be desperate to get themselves moving again. Yeah. And, yeah. I, and yeah. It is, it is tough though for schoolboys. They, they train a lot better when they've got a, a match on the weekend. Yeah, for sure. Um, and, and we found that when our first, uh, well, our second fixture was cancelled. So it was cancelled on the, on the Tuesday afternoon. We were due to play on the Saturday, and it was just before we all went on lockdown. Suddenly, the whole motivation level of the training just went Amazing. down because they knew they didn't have a game on the weekend. So now you're going to have boys come back, and, and there's going to be no games on the weekend. So the other thing we're looking at as soon as we can start competing against each other, we will just do internal stuff. Yeah. So it'll be inter-house, inter-house, all sports, whatever we can play, the soonest we'll start playing inter-house now. Yeah. Just to get that competitive edge. Otherwise, the, the boys don't train hard. They just find they go through the motion. Yeah. That, uh, they're training for the sake of training. I guess it's like any sport now. As you said, I was involved with the Sharks. Pre-season is the worst thing. You, know, you have a nine to 12 week pre-season with no games in sight. It's, it's tough. It's tough to get through that. But as yeah. soon as you know you've got a game on the weekend, the levels and the intensities and the, the enthusiasm just lift. So that is going to be a huge challenge for the teachers um, to try and keep them, to motivate the boys to, to train properly. And, and the best way to do it is to have internal sort of fixtures and, and play against each other as soon as you can. Just a, just a last question on, on, on school sport before we kind of move on. Yeah, because I do want to ask you about what your thoughts are on professional sport and, and, and where it goes now as well. But one last question on, on that. I know, you know, I, was, I mentioned to someone that we were going to be having this podcast conversation and um, his question was, how do you see this impacting the smaller schools um, you know, a lot of our school, smaller schools, government schools are going to find fi the financial times exceptionally tough. Um, you know, do you see, do you see sport getting back to where it was? You know, let's say, let, let's talk six months. Let's talk about next year, January. Um, you know, do you think there's going to be, do you think this is going to change, potentially change the face of, of, of school sport? In particular, kind of primary government, you know. I don't. I don't think it will. I think look, South Africa's sport crazy. I don't think it's yeah. going to. And it's most of it stems from the parents, not from the kids. I don't think it's going to change the the face of it. I think. I think schools might look at it in a different way and think. Yeah. It is, you know, we all know that school sport is massive in South Africa, and people are spending a lot of money on school sport. I think what might happen is, governing bodies and headmasters might turn around and say. Is it the be all and end all now? Are we? Is it worth spending that much money when, when things like this can happen? You know? Yeah. Um, I think it's put life into perspective. Um, obviously, we still want school sport. I, I think it will bounce back. I think we will. The competitive side of things will will, will happen again, and it will get back to where we were. Um, I can't see school sport dying. It's not no. not in our blood in South Africa. It's, no, it'll no, it'll come back. I think it'll come back sooner rather than later. And I think it's probably the thing that South Africans are missing the most is the sport on the weekends, whether it's school sport or professional sport, yeah. watching sport on TV. Yeah. Um, I know all my mates, like, all I wanted is watch a live match. Yeah? <laughs> yes. Any live match, that's all I want. I'm yeah. missing that the most. And yeah. if you ask the kids, they're probably missing that. They're not missing the teachers or the classroom. <laughs> so, uh, I, I don't think it'll take long. Once we get the all clear, we can play against each other. I think it'll be up and running as soon as possible after that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I mean, you, you make a good point there about, you know, maybe if, if, if nothing else, maybe it's given us a little bit of perspective on, on, on what, it, what our sport is. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. It is kind of very much in, a, in South African blood. Um, and I think school sport will bounce back and, you know, I think it does maybe, maybe it will give a little bit of perspective on, on how blessed we are to be able to play sport. I think we haven't realized the impact that it has on our lives. Um, Ryan, you, you talk about, so in terms of professional sport, I mean, you know, as you say, we all love our sport. What, what do you, what do you think the kind of, um, 
return to play, and my brother uses the you know return to play protocol term. Yes. I mean, what does that look like for for professional sport? Do you think? Sure, it's it's tough. I, I, was, I was chatting to a friend last night who does um, analysis, and um, it's pretty much like your brother, but he's involved in the in the UK. Um, yeah. And they were talking about uh, the UEFA Cup. Um, doing some analysis on that and that they possibly looking at a study on how during a match how how long is a person in contact with someone else so it's sort of like the risk behind transferring this virus while you're playing playing the sport and whether they should try and finish the UEFA Cup or, or scrap it completely wow. and apparently the debate behind it is um, what happens if one of your top footballer say uh, Lionel Messi picks up the virus playing and he dies or he gets seriously ill yeah. is, is it worth the risk so I think those are the things that the top sporting bodies are, are, are considering obviously yeah. they want to get back it's revenue they want to they want to look after their sponsors uh, they need to get crowds in um, uh, the biggest challenge is when do they start playing because as soon as the ban or the lockdown is lifted it's the return to play protocol that you're talking about is, is conditioning these these yeah. professional athletes. You, know, you don't just suddenly go from sitting on the couch to playing a professional sport on the weekend. You, you need a good good four weeks or five weeks, maybe even longer, to, to condition them. Yeah. Obviously, as soon as the levels go down to level four, three, two, they'll start conditioning, and I'm sure they've started already. But is it worth getting in crowds to the games? Uh, I've seen a, a number of articles. There's one written yesterday where during the first... Uh, Autumn Internationals, which uh, South Africa are touring in the UK, they allowed 167 personnel at the game. So they've already drawn up a list of who that 167 personnel are, from your 30 odd players to your coaches, five coaches in each box, a doctor on each team, a physio on each team, uh, 12 cameramen, six, six uh, officials, uh, 12 cameramen, um, they've gone through everything and it works out to 160 people and that's who is going to be allowed at the Autumn Internationals. And that's coming from World Rugby and the broadcasters mm. and things like that. That's, so they, they, really they, that's been interesting, yeah. They, they, that's the kind of things they're thinking of at the moment. So no crowds, absolutely no crowds. Only yeah. 167 people at a, a major, so it'll be South Africa against Wales, there'll be 167 people at the game and that's including the players themselves. Wow, so it's, big, it's a big challenge. So, it is a big. So challenge. how it's going to look? Who knows? Uh, I, yeah. I can't see us having crowds for a while. Um, never mind the travelling. We obviously we need to cross borders first before we can even think about crowds. Yeah, absolutely. Sure, and um, yeah, as you say, it's, it's it's a flexible thing, and it's. I think we're we're going to be doing this on the hoof, and and it's interesting to see all all the you know the thoughts around what might it might look like, and and as you say, I mean these are are really you know, unknown times for us and, and we've got to just keep thinking about potential solutions. So yeah. I suppose, you know, I, I'm aware of the time. And that, so Ryan, I think, you know, give me, I know this is, might not be the easiest task and I'm kind of, you know, putting you on the spot here, but what, what do you think the positives are as a, for you as, as a master in charge of sport at a school? Have there been any, any positives you've been able to take out of, out of the, the sport and, and physical aspect of, of or things that you've learned potentially out of this yeah it's uh, look it's hard to to say they're all positives um I, I think i think it's as we said earlier it's definitely put sport school sport into perspective you know what's what's important to school you know at the end of the day it's about your matrix getting enough enough of their work in to pass the exams at the end of the day uh, that's obviously our, our first priority um yes the boys are sad. They're not playing their first team games for, for their school, um, which they've been training for, waiting for, for five years or whatever it is. Um, that's sad. But it is putting putting into perspective how important is actually the school sport at the end of the day. Are you at school, school to just play sport or are you at school to get, get an education? So I think that's, that's, put a, that's it's tough coming from me because I'm employed as the head of sport. But at the end of the day, you know, your education is obviously a lot more important than playing first team rugby or first team hockey that, that the guys are missing out. Um, I think we, we've also, hopefully, that the, we've, the kids have learned that they, they start to appreciate their teachers, for one, um, start appreciating school, um, and, and also then appreciating that what the sport actually offers you at school. So when you haven't got it and you're in confined spaces, you know, make the most of it when you get back. 
uh, make the most of your education, your school, and your facilities, and your coaches, um, and, and start appreciating it a little bit more. I think a lot of a lot of kids and parents take it for granted. And I think from from a parenting, and that's for me, and 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 looking at outside is that parents are going to appreciate their teachers a lot more. It's not easy doing this homeschooling or keeping your kids busy if you don't have the homeschooling. Uh, um, we're obviously fortunate. My kids are doing online stuff, but if you don't have that have that ability, imagine how difficult it is to motivate, keep your kids motivated for for two months yeah. you know, while they're sitting at home. It's not an easy thing. So, hopefully, the kids and the parents will also appreciate the teachers a lot more. Yeah. Um, I think also the big thing we've learned from a, a training point of view is you've got to you've got to mix it up. Um, uh, kids of today get bored very quickly. You yeah. know, they want instant gratification. And so you've got to, you make it short and sweet. Um, if they see a program online that they've got to do that's going to be so taxing on them, they're not going to do it. But if they see a program online that's going to take them 10, maybe five, 10 minutes to do 20 push ups or whatever it is, in any case, um, they'll, they'll do it. You know, they'll get out and do it. So, yeah. so make it exciting, make it short and sweet, yeah. and hopefully they'll do it. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I, Ryan, I think, you know, I'm going to echo what you say. I think that the, the, the one thing that is really that I think we're going to take out of this is, is we'll, we'll have much higher levels of gratitude in, in, in what we have when, when life is, is, is normal, you know, in inverted commas. And, you know, the, that, you know, being, you know, the, having those higher levels of gratitude for our, our teachers and, 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 our, and, our, and actually our friends. You know, I think the kids are going to yeah. really, are, are they missing their mates, aren't they? And I think that's important. Yes. I think we'll realize when we get back the important, I think we realize now the importance of human connection, the importance of well-being and the role that sport and phys ed play in our well-being as people. And even if we aren't competitive sports folk, just getting out there and being active and, and how much better that, as you say, getting some blood in the brain and how much yeah. better that makes us feel. And certainly those little things, you know, the fact that we putting life into perspective, understanding that these things are important, but they are and being grateful for having the opportunity to do them. And, and I, I certainly hope, I know my kids are going, oh, cannot wait to get back to school. They're desperate for it. Yeah, and, mine too. Yeah, and, 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 that, and, and for one, I think that's, that's us doffing our hats as parents to you guys, as, as, as educators, as teachers, because the fact that they get so keen to get back is not just about, you know, not being stuck inside. It's also about the fact that they actually do enjoy being, being at school and being yeah. active and being engaged and being stretched, which is of course a positive. Yeah. And then, and Ryan, I think just to finish off and, and it's been so wonderful listening to, to your thoughts on this as, as someone who heads up a, a, a sports department and, and, you know, I'd love you to offer some advice to school leaders and to other directors of sport or teachers of sport in, in, in all the schools out there. You know, if there were maybe one or two pearls of wisdom you could offer them, what would it be? Yeah, sure. I, I think from a, what I've learned from schoolboys, because uh, obviously I'm in a boys' school, but I'd say girls are probably exactly the same as, as I said earlier. They want into instant gratification. Um, they're used to getting answers and things just at a push of a button. Um, so one, you've got to mix things up. So the monotony of training is is the worst thing for any sportsman, whether you're a professional or a school kid. Monotony is the worst thing. So you got to keep mixing it up, and you don't need to train long to to get benefits. Um, I think I think that's also a big thing. Is a lot of trainers or sports coaches will will do stuff for a long time, and, and kids don't want to do things for a long time. You know, you you can get a lot of benefit out of doing a hard ten minute session, maybe a twenty minute session. Um, as to opposed to get setting this long session, I think kids will, and obviously we're all using some sort of social media to send our, our programs and our training across. As soon as they look at it and see how long and taxing it is, they, they quit. Yeah. You know, so keep it short and sweet and exciting and, and make it a challenge, obviously. Yeah. Um, and the challenge is one, challenging themselves, but also challenging their mates. I think if you, if you make them challenge their mates um, by putting it on some form or, or platform of some sort, it does make it a little bit more exciting. Yeah. No, you, you know, it's interesting. You've, you've literally just touched on so many kind of aspects of positive education there. You know, engagement, meaning, you know, really important. You know, the, obviously the well-being is, is, is the doing it, but then connecting with their mates, obviously the, the, the relationship side of things. So, so that's really, really useful. So, Ryan, we, um, you know, our time is up, but it has been so good having you here um, on the In Conversations with 
uh, podcast series and you really have given us food for thought and like I say we're massively grateful to all the hard work that you guys are doing as educators and thanks for giving up the time to to share with us and all the best for when you do return I know it's not going to be easy but I, I think you, you you have a really good plan as to how that's going to be looking and um, yeah most of all stay safe out there thanks so much right uh, thanks, Greg, and uh, yeah, it's only a pleasure. And uh, yeah, I think I uh, appreciate what you're doing. I think it's such a fantastic concept, uh, getting the message out to, to everyone and to all the schools. I, th I just hope that uh, lots of schools and lots of kids actually watch, watch all your podcasts. Thanks so much. Appreciate that, Stratus. And folks, so thanks very much for joining Intrinsic Educations in Conversations with. We've had Ryan Stradwick with us this week, and it's been a really interesting one. I hope you all take some pills of wisdom out of it. Most of all, Stay safe.